Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I hope you guys are doing well. So in today's session, I'm going to discuss caching. Okay, so you might have heard uh, about this caching, or you might have faced this uh, in your interviews whenever you are attending some technical interviews. Okay, so I am going to implement this caching from a scratch. Okay, so uh, be there in the video till end. And uh, if you guys like this kind of content, then please do not hesitate to subscribe the channel and share the content with your friends. So obviously this is gonna motivate me to bring uh, this kind of content uh, in future as well okay so we are going to use this existing web api project that we have created so if you have not seen this project and if you like are curious to know how we can create the web api project from scratch then you can click on the i button to watch this video or you can just uh, visit the link in the description as well i will put up the link in the description okay so just to give you brief let me run this project to show you how many endpoints we have created and what we can do is we can take one endpoint for an example to demonstrate you the caching we'll implement it from a scratch so be there okay so let's run this project first so this is gonna uh, load the swagger page okay okay guys so if you see these are the endpoints we have okay so uh, if you see we have uh, get endpoints as well as post endpoints okay so if i'm going to uh, query this endpoint so it is going to return me the list of employees from the database okay so it is going to make a database call so let's click on execute so if you see it is uh, hitting the controller and then it will go to the repository as well so this is my repository okay so i have placed this breakpoint to show you guys what happened when you implement the caching okay so as of now we do not have any caching right so this is obviously gonna hit every time so if you see this is the response it is returning okay so uh, we'll do this caching and all those things uh, using the postman to show you better what is happening okay so let's copy this endpoint and uh, execute this in postman okay so let's open the postman and then we can just paste our url here okay and then we can click on the send so obviously it is going to hit this endpoint again okay so uh, if you see uh, this is the response we are getting so don't worry about the time as of now because we are debugging it to show you okay so once we implement caching we'll see it uh, after disabling the breakpoints okay so few things to note here is our status is 200 that is uh, okay status then it's the time uh, taking to uh, return you the response 4.17 seconds actually it should be lesser because we are debugging it okay and size so this is the size that is 875 bytes okay so that was the brief now we are going to implement uh, caching okay so let's go okay so let's create one folder inside api project so that we can keep uh, anything specific to the caching inside that folder okay so let's create a folder uh where is the add option add option and then uh, where is the folder new folder and i can name it as caching okay right so uh we are done now what happened we need one cache key okay so for that what we can do is we can create one a static class and we can name it as cache keys okay so obviously we are going to put uh, only one key as of now okay so public uh, make this class as a static class and then we can declare one key uh, called uh, employee okay so let's declare that key public static string employee is equal to employee okay so that's done uh, so the first step is we have created the uh, key cache key okay that is something that we are going to use inside controller okay now let's uh, go to the controller okay so guys what we are going to do here is we are going to use uh, microsoft extension memory caching okay as well as we are going to use the lazy cache so, so for that what we have to do is we have to import two packages two nuget packages okay go to the api project uh, and then manage nuget package and you have to search here memory caching so you'll be getting microsoft dot extension dot memory caching okay this one so we need to install it okay so if you see uh, after installing you can see these things here in the package so if you see this is done now the next thing we need to install is lazy cache okay So we need this lazy cache dot ASP.NET core. Okay, so let's install it. Okay, 
Okay, so this is also done. So both the uh, packages have been added. So the next step is to register this to inside your program.cs. Okay, so let's go here and uh, we can write builder dot services dot add memory cache. Okay, and then another thing you need to add is the lazy cache. Okay, builder dot services dot add lazy cache okay so both the things we have done here now let's go to the controller the only game left is there with the controller let's go of interface so private and uh, so the interface we need is i cache provider okay so probably you need to add the namespace here yes and then we can write as provider okay so that's done now let's use that here I cast provider and provide. that's fine so it will be using this okay now this is your existing code uh, where we are not using any caching okay so what we can do is we can comment it out as of now okay so we'll be implementing it from a scratch so we are going to write if not cast provider dot trying at value okay and then we can use the cast key so cast keys dot uh what is the cast key we have uh, declared employee right comma so if if the caching is not done okay so when you execute this request for the first time okay this statement is gonna be true because as of now you have not cached anything so what would you like to do is you would like to make a database call you would like to populate the employees uh, object okay and then you need to assign that uh, employee object to the cache variable so that uh, we can store that in cache and we can get it from the next time uh, we can write out and then list of employees okay and let's make a uh, name as something called employees okay so if this statement is true which means uh, as of now we have not cached okay so what we can do is uh, we'll be making use of this uh, database call so we are going to populate this employees by calling this repository okay so that's done now the next thing is uh, after getting the result we want to store that in a cache okay so how you can do it okay so let's declare one uh, cache entry option is equal to new memory cache entry option okay so this has to be uh, coming from the nuget package uh, microsoft dot extension dot caching dot memory so you have to add it here as a namespace okay so this one okay and then this is done so now uh, what you have to do is you have to add the value in the property so the first thing we need to add here in this cache entry option is the absolute expiration so let's add that absolute expiration okay so what is this absolute expiration is uh, we are telling the cache to hold this object until this time okay so i want to store this object in a cache uh, memory for uh, let's say 30 seconds okay so i will be writing like this date time dot now dot add seconds so you can add minute you can add days also so it, it's up to you but i want to show you guys uh, quickly so i'm going to add uh, seconds so i'm going to add uh, this object in a memory for 30 seconds okay so not this then the next thing is uh, sliding expiration okay so sliding expiration is something uh, it, it tells you like uh, after making the first request up to how much time you want to keep this object in a cache memory okay so this one also i want to uh, make it for 30 seconds so we can write time span dot you can write from seconds okay and then you can write 30 so here also i'm going to make it as 30 and uh, in the beginning for him adding this semicolon okay and in the beginning i showed you guys like uh, there was something called a uh, size so if you see we have this data coming for 875 bytes okay 
so in the size okay we can mention it as uh, 1024 that should be enough for this right so this this comes in a byte okay now we have created this cache entry option right so uh, after this we want to call this cache provider dot set method and we want to store this in a cache okay so let's call this cache provider dot set and then if you see it is asking a string key okay so what is the key we have we have the key as uh, cache keys dot employee dot employee comma the second thing it is asking is the object item okay so object is nothing but this employee so we want to store this in a cache memory comma and the third thing is this policy okay so just now we have created this policy so um, that's done okay and then you need to return something right so every time I, i'm going to return this employees only right so we can write return okay and then employees so that's done okay let's remove this portion of code we don't need this as of now okay so our caching is complete okay so let's try to run this so uh, what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put one breakpoint here so that you can see for the first time when we hit this endpoint okay when we hit this gate employees for the first time when we have not stored anything in the cache it is going to come here and it is going to go to the database also for the second time it's not going to come inside this if okay it is directly going to return this because we have something stored here in the cache okay so let's run this project and let's go to the postman okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to make a call okay for the first time so for the first time if you see uh, it is going to come to this part let's click continue so it has come here right it will go to the database call also so it came to the database call okay now it will return you the response okay so if you see the time it has taken as 13.70 seconds that is with the debugging okay so that's not a problem i will disable the debugging and i will show you guys what exactly it is taking at the last okay now let's make a second request so as of now we have stored that in a cache okay so this time it is not going to hit this see we got the response directly and the time it has taken as 3.75 seconds now there is a catch if you see we have directed this to store this object in a cache for 30 seconds only okay now what happen if you try after 30 seconds obviously it is going to hit the database again so let's see that okay so as of now i think we have a lap 30 seconds so i'm going to make a third call so obviously this time it is going to hit the database okay let's see it came here right so irrespective of you have implemented the caching if you are uh, giving the time as very less uh, okay then obviously it is going to uh, make a database call again okay so let's go continue if i would have made this uh, add minute or add hour then uh, it would have not gone into this block it would have not called the database okay now let's do one thing okay let's disable all the breakpoint and analyze what is the time actually it is taking okay so let's go to the debug and disable all the breakpoints okay let's run this project again this time it is not going to hit any breakpoint this is going to give you data directly okay so first time you are going to get the data and it is going to take a bit uh, longer time so if you see it has taken 1364 milliseconds okay but for the second time when i hit it okay obviously this uh, response would have a stored in cache so you are going to get this response in very less time compared to this 1364 let's make a second hit see how much how much time it has reduced 7 millisecond only okay let's hit again 9 milliseconds so we'll meet up in the next video till then bye bye take care